Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Tua Tiu Chan. This movie tells the story of a college boy who unexpectedly travels 100 years back in time, back to the 1920s, when Taiwan was under Japanese rule. There, he meets a woman with whom he falls in love. Will he find true love in the past 100 years? Let's find out in Tua Tiu Chan. Tua Tiu Chan begins by showing a young man named Jack who is walking down the street in an old town. Jack saw papers flying around him. Not long after that, the buildings in the city slowly collapsed and almost fell on him. However, all of that turned out to be just his dream. The young man was then woken up by his lecturer who scolded him for falling asleep while the lecturer explained the history of Taiwan. The lecturer, often called Professor P, again scolded him and said that studying history was useless for him. After that, Professor P gave an antique camera to Jack. The young man seemed to check each side of the camera, then used the camera to take a picture of one of the wall clocks in the room. Surprisingly, after he took a picture of the clock, the clock on the wall suddenly stopped moving, and the same thing happened to the other clock. Professor P realized this, then wondered if Jack was the chosen one. After attending Professor P's lecture, Jack then sent text messages to his friends to help him prepare a surprise because his girlfriend was having a birthday. Jack and his friends brought flowers and dolls. Unexpectedly, his girlfriend dumps him in front of everyone. She openly revealed that she already had a new boyfriend who was more considerate than Jack, and even introduced her new boyfriend to everyone. Jack who felt heartbroken, then contemplated under the night sky while looking at the glittering city of Taipei. He recalled the memories with his family when he was a child. At that time, he felt very happy because he had parents who loved him very much. However, one day, Jack's father left his family. Because her husband had betrayed her and left her family, her mother became depressed and eventually fell into drugs and died. Jack, who felt very sad after his mother's departure, then determined that he would be fine to fulfill his promise to his mother. One day, Jack and his friends visited the Tuatiu Tian Museum to take a study tour with Professor P at the Altar of Offering. He then prayed to the gods to be reunited with his true love. After that, he walked through the museum while paying attention to the items from Taiwan's history. Jack, who looked bored, was suddenly attracted by the inscription carved on the stone of the water prison which read, Flower Youth Is. After that, he rushed over to his friends and got a coin bearing the image of Dr. Cheng, the founder of the state of Taiwan. The tour continues as Jack and his friends approach Professor P standing near a Tua Tiu Tian painting about a hundred years old. After Professor P explained a brief history of Tua Tiu Tian's painting, he then said that Tua Tiu Tian's painting is like a door to the past, which means anyone can return to the past 100 years by taking pictures of the paintings with an ancient camera that is also a hundred years old. Hearing Professor P's words, Jack was interested in trying it. He took out the old camera his teacher gave him some time ago, and took a picture of the Tua Tiu Tian painting. Sure enough, he was sucked into the painting. After exploring time and space, Jack finally arrived in the 1920s, when Taiwan was still colonized by Japan. However, he has not fully realized this because he met his friends, even though their appearances were very different and they did not recognize him. Jack's friends then invited him to put on a lion dance performance because a celebration was being held to open a new textile shop in the area. Jack, who really couldn't perform the lion dance, then disrupted the event, making Mr. Lin, the man who owns the shop angry. However, Jack gets a defense from Mrs. Ginger, the woman who owns the shop across the street, a rival to Mr. Lin's shop. The two textile shop owners then got into an argument which led to a commotion. On the other hand, Jack looks amazed to see Mrs. Ginger whose face is very similar to his late mother, and without realizing it, he calls her his mother. A trivial commotion turned into chaos when Professor P suddenly appeared and threw chickens at Mr. Lin and his men. Jack, who realized that Professor P recognized him, then chased him to demand an explanation. However, Professor P managed to escape. Jack got lost until he finally arrived at a port. He was surprised because the atmosphere at the port was not like the ports in his country, where the ships that docked there had not used engines like modern ships. Not long after, his friends came to pick him up at the port. Jack then asked them, what year is it? And he immediately fainted upon learning that he had been thrown into the year 1920. When he awoke, Jack was already at Mrs. Ginger's place, and he was still in awe of the resemblance of Mrs. Ginger and his mother. Mrs. Ginger then scolded Jack for constantly calling her mom. The woman then told Jack that she allowed Jack to stay at her house, but he had to work in her shop. After changing clothes, Jack decides to take a walk around the area and meet his friends where they look exactly the same as his friends in college, but their appearance is very different. Jack and his friends then get into an argument with Mr. Lin's son and his minions who mock the quality of Mrs. Ginger's merchandise. After successfully quelling the argument, 
Jack is introduced to Master Pig, a tailor at Mrs. Ginger's clothing store. Jack was surprised when he found out that Master Pig was Professor P. Jack immediately approached Professor P and asked that he be returned to the future. But Professor P refused and the two had a big fight. Their bickering caught the attention of the Japanese soldiers on patrol. However, Mrs. Ginger managed to separate them both and convince the Japanese soldiers to leave her shop. One day, Professor P asks Jack to help him prepare for a romance drama. While practicing, Jack met a beautiful girl named Rose and immediately fell in love with her. Rose is a geisha. Long story short, the day of the performance arrived. Jack gets the role of a tree. However, the drama stage, which was originally a romantic genre, suddenly turned into a comedy show because it experienced several problems with the script. However, the performance was a success and all residents seemed entertained and enjoyed the show to the end. It wasn't long before Jack finally found the Tua Tiu Tian painting, but it was still a sketch. He intends to return to the future and recklessly, he directly bangs his body against the painting. Of course, his efforts were fruitless. Professor P then tells Jack about using the Tua Tiu Tian painting as a time portal. First, he must be right in front of the painting. Second, he had to use a hundred-year-old vintage camera. And lastly, he had to state his request with all his heart. Professor P then reveals that he often uses Tua Tiu Tian's paintings as a portal to the past because he fell in love with Mrs. Ginger and hoped to marry her. Not only that, he also wants to collect the coffers of wealth so that he is not destitute in the future. Seeing Professor P's seriousness, Jack was moved to blend in well while he was in the past, while waiting for his painting to be finished. He began to change his clothes to match the fashion trends of the 1920s, but still look cool with a bit of touch of modern style. A few moments later, Jack met Rose again who was visiting Mr. Lin's clothing store. Confidently, he tried to approach Rose while singing and playing guitar. After that, he gave a rose to Rose as an introductory gift. Rose accepts the gift and the two of them finally get to know each other. Not only that, Rose also asked Jack to teach her to play the guitar, and in return, she would teach him to dance. Jack and Rose then went outside the store, attracted by the people who were huddled on the side of the road. It turned out that they were listening to Dr. Chang's speech about the dangers of opium, which was starting to be unsettling because Taiwanese people were getting addicted to the drug. In fact, opium was deliberately circulated by Japanese troops to destroy the younger generation of Taiwan. While giving a speech, Dr. Chang was pelted with dirt by someone, causing a riot. Jack and Rose immediately rushed away from there to avoid the commotion. Over time, Jack and Rose's relationship grew closer, and Jack enjoyed his job selling clothes at Mrs. Ginger's shop more and more. He then taught Rose and his friends to take pictures while making a V symbol with their hands, which still looked very strange at that time. One night, Jack reveals to Rose that he is from the future, but she didn't believe Jack's words. Jack then teaches Rose a new song so she can perform it at the governor's upcoming party. Long story short, the governor's party celebration arrived. Dr. Cheng, who attended the event, seemed to be involved in a heated debate with the Japanese governor. They planned a welcoming party for the Japanese prince who would visit their territory, where Dr. Cheng considered the celebration too lavish and cost a lot of money. Even though the money was obtained from Taiwanese citizens who were trying to survive under Japanese colonial rule. To reduce the heated situation, Rose then put on a show where she sang a new song taught by Jack. The show performed by Rose received appreciation from the governor and also everyone who attended the party. After the show, Jack walked up to Rose and asked her to dance on the back porch of the building. Immersed in the romantic atmosphere, the two of them danced passionately and almost kissed. However, Jack and Rose's romantic moment did not last long because of the presence of Japanese soldiers there. They then hide in water prison, not far from the place. While hiding, Rose asks Jack to tell her about the future, which impresses her. Rose then took to carve the phrase flowery youth is on the stone wall of the water prison. Jack immediately remembered the sentence he saw in the water prison when he visited the Tua Tiu Tian Museum, which made him very curious. He then hoped in his heart that Rose was the true love he had longed for. Jack came home from the governor's party and saw Mrs. Ginger rushing into the carriage and quietly following her. It turned out that Mrs. Ginger had gone to an opium house, a place where people could smoke opium for a fee. The owner of the opium house was the one who threw the dirt during Dr. Chang's speech. Because he remembered his mother who was also addicted to drugs, he immediately took Mrs. Ginger away with the help of Professor P after that. Dr. Chang came to Mrs. Ginger's place to treat her and expressed his concern that many Taiwanese were consuming opium as an escape from the problems they face. It was eventually revealed that Mrs. Ginger had taken opium to hallucinate and meet her son who had died years ago. While missing her late son, she would visit the opium house and smoke opium until she had the hallucinations she wanted. 
Jack then tells about his mother who died from drugs and does not want her to suffer the same fate. Jack also promised to save Mrs. Ginger from the dangers of drugs, because he never had time to save his mother. Unexpectedly, Mrs. Ginger saw her late son's reflection on Jack. One day, Professor P was visited by Japanese soldiers who bribed him with a gold bar to burn down Dr. Chang's office. Professor P then agreed to the request, but he actually burned the opium house with the help of Jack and his friends. While igniting the fire, Jack accidentally drops a coin with the image of Dr. Chang he got from the museum. The owner of the opium house who found the coin, then reported it to the Japanese army. Because they thought Dr. Chang intended to overthrow the Japanese government in Taiwan and declared independence, the Japanese army immediately ordered the arrest of Dr. Chang. Not long after that, Professor P got into an argument with the Japanese soldiers at Mrs. Ginger's place. The quarrel escalated when the Japanese soldiers began to commit violence and Professor P tried to fight them with the help of Jack and his friends. Hearing the commotion in her shop, Mrs. Ginger appeared and tried to break them up. Even Mr. Lin, who was across the street, helped reduce the tension. However, one of the Japanese soldiers opened fire which then hit Mrs. Ginger and Mr. Lin. Jack then has the idea of taking Mrs. Ginger to the future to get medical treatment at the hospital, while Mr. Lin eventually dies of serious injuries. Not long after, Dr. Chang was captured by the Japanese soldiers and thrown into a water prison. After realizing that they have a common enemy, which is the Japanese colonial army, Jack and Mr. Lin's son, along with their friends, finally work together to fight the Japanese colonial soldiers who control their territory. After Jack and his friends manage to free Dr. Chang, the owner of the opium house then devised a plan to kill the Japanese prince who was about to visit the area. They intended to make Dr. Chang the mastermind of the assassination to frame him. The man who owns the opium house then hires a hitman to carry out the mission. On the other hand, Dr. Chang and Jack have devised a plan to protect the Prince of Japan and intend to achieve independence by avoiding bloodshed. Long story short, the Prince of Japan arrived and made a convoy to the region. Jack notices the presence of snipers who are ready to shoot the prince. But he managed to thwart the assassination attempt by throwing pineapples at the snipers. When one of the snipers gets up and intends to fire again, Professor P then throws the painting of Tua Tien up, along with Jack and Rose who jump from the second floor to protect the Prince of Japan from the sniper fire. Suddenly, Jack was thrown back into the future, along with Rose, who seemed confused by her atmosphere. Jack then invites Rose to look for Professor P's whereabouts because he is afraid that his past actions will impact the future. During the trip to Professor P's place, Rose seemed amazed by the atmosphere of the future Taiwan. Jack can finally breathe a sigh of relief after meeting the same Professor P he knows and knowing that nothing has changed in the future. However, the V symbol that Jack taught in the past seems to be a symbol of joy when the Taiwanese population succeeded in gaining their independence from Japanese colonial rule. Rose intends to return to the past, but Jack chooses to stay even though he loves Rose very much. Jack thinks that he should live in the future because that is the place to be. Rose, who really understands Jack's wishes, finally gave up the young man gracefully and they promised to always remember the beautiful moments they spent together. After kissing one last time, Jack then sends Rose back in time with tears in his eyes. After that, Jack is reunited with Mrs. Ginger who has recovered from her wound. He then realizes that the writings carved on the stone walls of the water prison and the Tua Tiu Tian Museum have become one complete sentence. Jack was crying happily remembering the sweet memories he had with Rose. The film ends by showing Jack who is hanging out with his friends and accidentally meets a girl whose face is very similar to Rose.